and welcome back to another Paul's Aquariums Aquascape video. In this video I'm going to show you how to set up this exact tank, what substrate to use, what fish and plants to pick, how to set up a heater, filter and lighting. Let's get started with the tank. And for this build we are going to use one of these Orca Aquarium Fish Homes. What a lovely, lovely name. It is a low voltage 32 litre tank. It comes with a little touch buttony light as well as an internal filter that sucks the water through the bottom up into the little tray and then back into the tank again. Let's get it out of the box. And these tanks are curved glass so one big panel does the sides as well as the front. It has glass on the back. It comes with a little picture backgroundy thing. So lovely picture background. It comes with the light. So this is an LED light. It is completely waterproof so it sits actually under the filter which we'll show you in a second. And it comes with all the filter bits and pieces. Now you do get instructions with these tanks but if you're like me and you don't bother with instructions this video is just going to go through the basics of how to set up. Very 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 simple. Let's get started. The light consists of two bits, your LED light which is fully sealed in there and a transformer. So instead of just plugging the transformer into the light, which you can do, these tanks if we turn it around have a plug on the back of the tank as well. So this goes in line with these two plugs and that way your little touch sensor will work turning the light on and off. So there's a little recess right on the back of the tank under the filter where the light will sit and it should just push in perfectly in there like it does. So you have your cord coming out the side that is designed to go through that little hole there and then out the back of the tank. Now the lights in we're going back to the other side just like that. Now the light is ready to go we are going to sort the filtration out. And these are all the bits and pieces you get for the filtration. So you have your power head there, you have an impeller, which is a little electromagnet spirally spinny bit, which actually sucks the water into the actual filter itself. You have a little shaft and they will have a little tiny grommet on each side. So there's one there, the other one is inside there. Super important not to lose those. If you do lose those little rubber grommets, not only will it make a loud noise, but it will also damage the inside of the pump. So always make sure you've got both of those. That is the impeller cover. We have a little bit that holds the shafty bit into the impeller. And then we have a little strainer to stop baby fish and stuff like that getting sucked into the intake. We also have a little spray bar or we have this little bit which will just shoot the water down into our filter. So you can use one or the other of those. It also comes with a couple of different sponges, so a coarse and a finer blue sponge and it comes with a big bulky thing of carbon that you can open up. You need to replace carbon every six to eight weeks. Okay we're going to assemble this. Now that is assembled we're going to decide whether we want to use that little bit on there or the little spray bar. But this whole pump itself will just slot into that little slot there. So that slides in there and that little bit points towards our filter. So our plug obviously goes out the back through that little hole. Now we're ready to put our filter meter in. So we're going to go for the carbon to start with. So you want to give this a rinse out to get any dust out of it so it doesn't go through your tank. That will just sit in the bottom. We have a coarse sponge and a fine sponge. We're going to put the fine one in first. Then we're going to put the coarse one above it. The way that this works is the water will get sucked up through the bottom, it'll come up through the impeller, the water will trickle into here, it'll go through your filter media and then it will come back out through these little holes back into the tank. And the spray bar simply just attaches onto that bit and you want it just gently pushing the water in like that. So now we've got the filtration sorted and the light sorted. Now we're just going to attach our heater. We're using a Nawazi Heat Up 50 very cool little heaters, very easy to dial in. We're going to dial into about 26, 27 degrees and it's going to go on the back wall. So it's important to note that you want the heater fully under the water. So when you do your little water changes, you're going to take a small percentage, like 10, 15 percent of your water out. Always make sure that that is fully under the water. If you're going to do a bigger water change for some reason, you want to have that turned off for about half an hour before you do that because that glass will heat up. But that is just suction capped on the back of our tank there. We have our heater, we have our filter, we have our light all ready to go. Now we're going to add the substrate. The first thing we're going to add is some of this which is laterite. Laterite is just a mineral that will help grow plants so we're going to do a small layer of that at the bottom and then we're going to add some aqua earth shrimp soil. 
Shrimp soil is exactly the same as aqua earth. It is just in a smaller packet. Once we've got those two layers like you see there, we're gonna add a normal gravel to cap it off. Capping it off just stops the fish from stirring up the substrate. And now that we've got our layers all sorted, we're gonna use some Amazon wood. Yes, this has come all the way from the Amazon. You can use whatever wood you want, but gnarly little tiny pieces of wood. I'm also going to use these river rocks. So these are from New Zealand. They are smooth lava rocks. Very, very cool rocks again. So we're gonna use cool rocks and cool wood. <laughs> it's gonna be a cool tank. What we're gonna do is glue some of the wood on the rocks, make a few cool little structures. And we have jumped about a week. We have soaked our wood. We've made a few of these up. I'm probably not gonna use all of them in this tank build, but we'll see how we go. Very, very simple idea. It is just gluing wood onto rocks. We're gonna add a few more rocks and then we're gonna do our plants around it. So now we're gonna position our wood in our tank. This is the fun bit. Extremely simple setup. Three pieces of driftwood and about five rocks. That is all there is to this tank so far. That is a view from above, obviously. So what we're gonna do is have our longer plants right at the back. That will hide our heater. Our pump is hidden with a piece of driftwood. We can attach plants onto the driftwood if we want, but we're probably gonna keep it super, super simple and use crypt plants along the bottom. Crypt plants are called crypt plants because they will creep along the bottom and create a nice low layer mat of plants. And we have water in the tank. It is a little bit hazy, which is to be expected. Even if you do wash out the substrate, you're gonna get little particles. That should clear up in the next few days. What we're gonna do is dechlorinate it with Prime, which is a dechlorinator. We're gonna check our pH and we're gonna slowly bring our pH down over the next week. And one week later, we have plants in our tank. So our pH is stable at about seven to 7.2, which is ideal for the live bearers we're gonna put in this tank. We have five crypt plants along the front. So when you plant your crypt plants, you wanna plant them just so the roots are just underneath the capped layer. So then they'll start feeding off your active substrate and that will give them a big boost and they'll actually start creeping along the bottom. They're called crypt plants because they have little runners, like little hands, and they creep along and grow new plants. So they're gonna take over the whole front of the tank. In the back of the tank, we have a Java fern. Java fern is one of the hardiest plants you can get. They actually look really, really awesome as they get mature and they have a whole lot of new shoots coming off each of the leaves. So this will extend and pretty much cover the whole back of the tank. The really cool thing with these as well, like succulents, is you can actually take little plants off the mother plant. So all those little tiny plants on the leaves you can take off and you can attach them onto your wood and have extra plants everywhere. Or you can just stick them in your substrate. A very hardy, low light, low nutrients plant. So it's important to note, you don't want to put tons and tons of plants in. So a decent amount, but give them time to grow. It's going to take a little while for them to actually get their roots into the substrate and take off. So you're looking about two or three weeks by the time that happens. Certain plants will melt as well, and melting means they'll lose a lot of their leaves. It'll look horrible. So remove any of those dead leaves, but it will grow back again. So now we've got our plants in, we're going to get our fish. And we've decided on six female Mickey Mouse platies in a mixture of colors. We have a blue one, we have a white one, and we have some awesome sunsets. So the reason we're going all girls and not girls and boys is we don't want the boys to harass the girls in such a small tank. Now that we've got them in our tub with the water out of the shop, what we're gonna do is we're going to get a small container like that. We are going to add water from our fish tank into our container every five or 10 minutes over about half an hour. That will just acclimatize them to our pH and temperature is what we've got in our fish tank. And now they are acclimatized to our water, we are just going to net them out and we're gonna gently release them in the tank. So with most fish that are new to an aquarium, it's gonna take them a couple of days to settle and start acting like normal. So we're gonna let these girls settle and we're gonna jump a day or two. And we've jumped a few days and now our platies have settled into the tank, foraging for food, doing platy stuff. As I said before, platies are a super hardy, cheap tropical fish, perfect for beginners or people that just want an easy to keep and maintain aquarium. If you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, click the thumbs up so I know. If you've got any questions, comment in the comments down below and I'll get back to you. Thank you very, very much for watching. We will see you in the next video.